Capital One saves 90% on overhead by switching to server. Adobe engineers blow through 80k a day on accidental compute instances. I hate serverless. I love serverless. What does it all mean? <sighs> Good morning, ladies. Serverless computing is the practice of moving physical computing infrastructure into the cloud. So instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on your own server you can blow up, you can blow up someone else's. When you build a serverless application, you're passing all of the required compute power off to someone who has enough money for such servers. And in return, you get a wide variety of features such as monitoring and a pay-as-you-go payment structure. Whoa, is that the boring alarm going off? Listen, I know what you're all here to ask. How do I host the next multi-billion dollar adult entertainment website in the cloud? Well, hold on, we're getting there. Serverless architecture has been at the forefront of software companies for a few years now. It allows tech companies, large and small, to host all of their infrastructure in the cloud. There are a few main players when it comes to cloud computing. AWS from Amazon, Azure from Microsoft, and GCP from Google Cloud Platform. When you pick which of these platforms you want to sell your newfound startup sold to, there are only really three main steps to get started. Create an account, decide which services you need, and most importantly, give them your credit card information. Such platforms have hundreds of different services that they provide, 90% of which you won't use or even know they exist. Kind of similar to Adobe and their creative cloud suite. Sorry, Adobe, I love you. Now I wanna go over a few of the features that are most used in cloud computing. I'm gonna use AWS and their feature collection for my examples because it's what I'm most familiar with but everything I go over is pretty much parallel across all of the cloud platforms. EC2 is highly used in the cloud world as it serves as a virtual server in the cloud. These servers are provisioned, which means the deployer gets to choose the operating system and physical specifications of the machine. And these servers are able to run pretty much any program that you throw at them. Applications such as web servers are of the most common use cases for EC2. Fun fact, most servers for games that you play are probably EC2 or something of the like, but sometimes you just need something to run once and call it a day. And that's what Lambda does for. Lambda is a service that provides cloud functions which run only once when a predetermined event is fired. They do their program job and then delete themselves and their data. A great use case for something like this is having a Lambda function that spins up, checks if your favorite programming YouTuber uploaded a new video, and then sends an alert through an API if it detects something new. Please subscribe below, I put a lot of effort into these videos. Like I said, Lambda functions are stateless, so they aren't able to access any runtime data from previous runs, but they are seamlessly able to access data in your DATABASES! Every company has their new bleeding edge database solution that is either 900% slower or faster than the industry standard. And the cloud is here to support that. Cloud services support many different databases, from SQL and other relational databases, to document-driven databases like MongoDB. Regardless of which database you end up choosing, your cloud features are able to seamlessly access and write data to your databases at any time needed. The databases that are stored in the cloud are able to split themselves up into multiple different pieces, which is called sharding, meaning that you can have multiple different clusters of the same database just hosted on different servers, which can actually reduce the load on your main systems. I wanna talk about scaling as I start to wrap up. There are two types of scaling when it comes to computer architecture. Those are horizontal and vertical. I'll get into what each of them mean in a second, but scaling is one of the main selling points for cloud-hosted solutions. If you set up your scaling properly, you're able to scale the number of EC2, Lambda, or any other features instances to distribute your compute load across them. Like I said, there are two types of scaling, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal scaling is the practice of deploying more of the same compute instance to deal with the load. For instance, my favorite game of all time, Fortnite, doesn't just have one super powerful instance that can host all of the players. As each of the EC2 instances start to come under load, they will need to horizontally scale, which means we spawn more of these instances to take on more of the traffic load. But also, it just makes more sense from a design perspective for each lobby of Fortnite to be their own EC2 instance, as it's much more simple and easy to manage. But anyways, so when a new lobby of Fortnite is created, a new instance of an EC2 server is spun up to handle the logic for just that lobby. Then when the game is done, the server shut down and the data is white. This solution is very simple, easy to manage, and highly cost efficient. But vertical scaling is quite different, however. The act of vertical scaling is throwing more compute power at one node in the architecture. So for example, if you're creating a super fire hype v shoes website that required people to log in when a drop happens and buy a limited edition item, we would allow the server to have as much compute power as needed to handle all of the traffic. If we horizontally scaled this example, then each node would be up to a couple milliseconds off from its pure nodes, which could cause some people to lose their spot in the queue or be put in front of others who are logged into different nodes. Make sense? So if you have something like Fortnite where each node in the architecture doesn't depend on its peer nodes to operate, then horizontal scaling is fine. But if the persistent data on the node is critical to the entire operation, then vertical scaling might be the way to go. Vertical scaling is much more cost efficient than horizontal scaling, but only really to a point. If you've ever built a computer before, you know that there's a limitation for how good of hardware you can throw at your computer. 
And that limitation is set by what's available on the market today. Like your shitty indie game does not deserve an early release RTX 5090 because you don't know how to load balance. But the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to serverless architectures is what do I think about it? Six out of 10, I horizontally scaled my business to bankruptcy.